In Escape from Tarkov, some of the more advanced consumables you'll encounter are injectors. These are quick use health items which can grant your PMC with various buffs as well as debuffs. There are many different types of these within the game, so today I'll be walking you through each of them in depth. For each, we'll define its positive effects, negative effects, when it should be used, if it's craftable, if it's needed for a quest, and its average market price. The order we'll go through these will roughly start with the more commonly used ones and end with the less commonly used. Before we get into it, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash johnnybusak or on TikTok under the same name. The most commonly found injector in EFT is morphine. In short, it's basically a quick use painkiller. It has a two second use time, as do all of the other injectors we'll be talking about today. It'll remove contusions and provide a painkiller effect for 300 seconds. As for debuffs, it'll lower your hydration by 15 and your energy by 10. With this in mind, make sure you're bringing in the proper amount of food and water into Raid to counter the effects. As for when to use morphine, you can treat it as any other painkiller. For myself, I use another painkiller for my typical pre-medding throughout the Raid and before combat, and save morphine for the moments where I need to activate a painkiller quickly mid-fight. It can be crafted in your hideout at mid-station level 2 by using a syringe, pile of meds, and analgam painkillers. As for typical market price, it sits around 20,000 rubles, so it's one of the cheapest injectors you'll see on this list. You'll end up needing 4 Morphine Found in Raid for Therapist's Quest Painkiller, and 4 Found in Raid for Peacekeeper's Quest Spa Tour Part 7. The next injector is Propodol. These can be found pretty commonly throughout med spawns in EFT. Its list of buffs are quite long. It removes pain and contusions for 240 seconds, enables health regeneration at a rate of 1 point per second, and increases the metabolism, health, and vitality skills by 20 levels for 300 seconds. The buff to health will decrease hydration and energy depletion and decrease your chance of fractures, while vitality will reduce the chance of bleeds. Its list of debuffs, on the other hand, is short. 270 seconds after using the injector, you'll receive a tremor and tunnel vision for 30 seconds, both of which are purely just visual hindrances. All of this considered, Propodol is an extremely powerful stimulant. When to use it is pretty simple. Use it in any situation where you need both health regeneration and a painkiller effect. I tend to use one when I'm engaging in a fight where I know I'm going to take a bit of damage, or when I've already taken damage and need faster healing than my medkit alone can handle. 7 Propodol can be crafted in the hideout at med station level 3, with 1 ibuprofen, 1 golden star, and 2 piles of meds. It should be noted that this craft can be completed with a single use left on your ibuprofen and golden star. As for market price, Propodol usually averages around 20,000 rubles. Next up is the SJ6 injector. For 240 seconds, it'll provide an increase to your maximum stamina by 30, and increase your stamina recovery rate by 2 points per second. It has minimal debuffs, similar to Propodol, with only tunnel vision and a contusion occurring for 40 seconds, 200 seconds after injection. The stamina buffs provided are extremely powerful for increasing the length of time you're able to run, as well as the speed at which your stamina bar fills back up. Most often, SJ6s are used to quickly move off your spawn to a point of interest, such as rushing resort on shoreline or running to check player spawns throughout labs. They also can be used in fights when you're outnumbered when lots of repositioning is required. As for crafting, two can be made at med station level three with two piles of meds, one bottle of saline solution, one bottle of multivitamins, and one SJ1 injector. Their price sits significantly higher than our previous two injectors, averaging around 50 to 60,000 rubles. Next is the ETG injector. The ETG can be thought of as an advanced version of Propodol, but without the painkiller effect. For 90 seconds, it'll remove any contusions and increase the metabolism and immune Unity skills by 20. For 60 seconds, it'll increase health regeneration to 6.5 points a second and increase energy recovery to 0.5 points a second. As for debuffs, after a 65 second delay, the health and endurance skills will be decreased by 5 levels for 60 seconds and energy recovery will be decreased by 3 points a second for 20 seconds. With how powerful the ETG's health regeneration is, its debuffs are pretty much negligible. It should be used in situations when you're near death and you need your health points to be brought back up immediately. I usually say Save ETGs as my last resort option in a fight since they can be fairly expensive, averaging around 65,000 rubles each and close to 100,000 late wipe. They cannot be crafted but can be bartered for at therapist level 3 for 4 shampoos. Next, we have Zagustin. Zagustin can be thought of as the ultimate bandage and tourniquet combined. It'll remove any active light and heavy bleeds and prevent bleeding for 180 seconds. It'll also increase vitality for 180 seconds by 20 levels. Its debuffs are a decrease of the metabolism skill by 5 points for 180 seconds and, after a 170 second delay, 
a tremor and decrease in hydration recovery by 1.4 points per second for 40 seconds. Again, these debuffs are negligible because of how powerful the buffs are. There are plenty of times within fights where you'll find yourself stuck with a handful of bleeds at once, and your health points will be plummeting rapidly. This is where the Zagustin thrives, as you can stop all these bleeds instantly, without having to wait on the use time for stopping each with other consumables like bandages. Its bleed prevention stat is also very useful, but personally, I'd save them for the situations where you've already got multiple bleeds active. Zagustin cannot be crafted and averages around 35 to 45,000 rubles on the market. Next up is the mule. The mule serves one purpose, to help you pick up speed when carrying an extremely heavy load of loot to extract. For 15 minutes, it'll increase your weight limit by 50% at the cost of increased damage taken everywhere except the head by 9% and health drained by 0.1 points per second, both for the same amount of time. With these debuffs in mind, you'll need something to counter the health drain. Usually, I'll use a propotol at the same time to offset it. Considering the 9% increased damage taken across the body, mules should be saved for times when you aren't expecting combat for the rest of the raid, and the goal is purely getting to extract. They come with a hefty price tag of 100,000 rubles on the market, so you should consider the value of the loot you're trying to extract with when thinking about using one. Mules can be crafted at med station level 2 with 2 piles of meds, 2 cans of max energy, 1 morphine, and one's Augustine, but the price of all these work out to be equal to the mule's market price. One mule will be needed found in raid or crafted for Peacekeeper's quest samples. Next up is another extremely powerful injector, Meldonin. For 15 minutes, it'll decrease damage taken everywhere except for the head by 10%, increase stamina regeneration by 0.5 points a second, increase the strength skill by 10, and increase the endurance skill by 20. Its debuffs are minor, with hydration and energy decreasing at an increased rate of 0.1 more points per second for 15 minutes as well. The decreased damage taken is the primary buff that people use Meldonin for. Given its 15 minute duration, it can be taken at the beginning of a labs or factory raid and surpass the time frame that most PvP will take place. On other maps, you can take it shortly before PvP is expected to occur. The 10% decreased damage taken may seem small at first, but can end up saving you from a bullet or two that would have killed you otherwise. Meldonin cannot be crafted, and one is required for the samples quest. It averages at around 50 to 60,000 rubles on the market, definitely a small price for its potential. Next is a very niche injector, but one definitely worth learning about, the XTG. XTGs serve one purpose, to remove and prevent poisoning from cultist knives for 60 seconds. For the same duration, they'll decrease the health skill by 5 levels. These are typically only worth carrying when hunting cultists, as the only other situation you need to worry about poison is from an enemy player carrying a cultist knife, which doesn't happen too often. They can be crafted at med station level 2 by using 1 adrenaline, 2 AI2 med kits, and two piles of meds, and average around 50,000 rubles on the market. The rest of the injectors on our list are less commonly used, but still worth learning the effects and value of. The SJ-1 can be thought of as a weaker alternative to an SJ-6 or Mule. For 180 seconds, it'll increase the Endurance, Strength, and Stress Resistance skills by 20 levels. The Endurance and Strength buffs will increase Stamina and increase Carrying Capacity, while the increased Stress Resistance will decrease the chance of getting the Pain or Tremor effects. For debuffs, after 100 seconds, and for a 200 second duration, energy depletion will be increased by 0.25 points a second, and hydration for 0.3 points a second. Personally, I don't use SJ1s in raid, as I prefer to use them for crafting SJ6s. If you were to use one in raid, they could provide decent buffs to movement for combat. Five SJ1s can be crafted with seven piles of meds, two bottles of saline, three propodol, and one morphine. They usually sit around 30,000 rubles on the market. The P22 is next up and can be thought of as a short duration meldonin. For 60 seconds, it'll decrease damage taken everywhere except the head by 10% and increase the stress resistance, health, and vitality skills by 30 levels. After 65 seconds, for a 60 second duration, it'll decrease the endurance skill by 10 levels and decrease stamina recovery by 0.8 points a second. Due to the short duration of its effects, a P22 should only be used during or directly before combat in order to benefit from its damage reduction. It cannot be crafted but is needed for the samples quest. It tends to sit around 25 to 30,000 rubles on the market. The L1 is a fairly simple injector and has a mashup of a few different buffs from other injectors. For 120 seconds, it'll act as a painkiller, increase maximum stamina by 30, increase endurance by 10 levels, and strength by 20 levels. Its buffs are similar to that of both an SJ1 and an SJ6, plus the painkiller effect. For debuffs, it increases energy and hydration depletion rates by 0.45 points a second. It can be useful as an all-around pre-combat movement buff stim, 
as well as a way to move a bit quicker when carrying a heavy load. L1s cannot be crafted, and one needs to be found in raid for samples. They typically sit around 24,000 rubles on the market. Next is our cheapest injector on the list, Adrenaline. It has a mashup of a few different interesting effects. It'll remove contusions and act as a painkiller for 65 seconds. Increase the endurance, strength, and recoil control skills by 10 levels for 60 seconds, and regenerate health by 4 points a second for 15 seconds. For 60 seconds, it'll decrease the stress resistance skill by 10 levels, and after 50 seconds for a 30 second duration, it'll increase energy and hydration depletion by 0.6 and 1 point per second respectively. The most notable effects of adrenaline are the short bursts of health regeneration and the increased recoil control skill. The best time to use one of these would be right before combat or when stopping mid-combat to heal. There are obviously better alternatives for all of its buffs, but at a market price of 18,000 rubles, it's a cheap extra tool to have on hand. Lastly, it cannot be crafted in the hideout. Our next injector, the AHF-1M, can be thought of as a less powerful Zagustin. Its only buffs are bleeding prevention and an increase of the health skill by 5 points, both for 60 seconds. As a debuff, it'll increase hydration depletion by 0.3 points a second for 120 seconds. Since it only prevents bleeds and does not stop them like Zagustin does, it really only serves purpose as another pre-combat stimulant to use if you have one on hand. One is needed for the samples quest, and one is needed for therapist's quest, Colleagues Part 3. It cannot be crafted and sits around 30,000 rubles on the market. Next, the 3BTG is an interesting one which can be considered the looting stim. For 240 seconds, it'll increase the attention and perception skills by 30 levels, strength by 10 levels, and stamina recovery rate by 1 point per second. The increase to attention will increase your looting and examination speed, while the increase to perception will increase your hearing distance and loot detection radius, which is a small white dot that appears when loot is nearby. For debuffs, after 120 seconds, and for a duration of 120 seconds, the energy depletion rate will increase by 0.25 points a second. After 220 seconds, and for a duration of 45 seconds, a tremor will occur. As for usage, these really don't have a practical use case, aside from potentially looking to benefit from the hearing distance increase resulting from the perception buff. One of these is needed for samples and one is needed for colleagues part 3, so if you find any in raid, you're best off keeping them for those quests. They cannot be crafted and can be sold on the market for 35 to 40,000 rubles. The Abdobos injector is more of a meme item than something that has a practical use case. For 30 minutes, it'll increase the endurance and strength skills by 10 levels stress resistance and charisma by 20 levels, and the stamina recovery rate by 0.5 points a second. The definite debuffs are a decrease in the memory, intellect, and attention skills by 20 levels for 30 minutes. On top of these, there are also a variety of other debuffs which have a 25% chance of occurring for the 30 minute duration, which I'll list here. The buffs for the Abdobos are not great whatsoever, and the debuffs can be brutal. That being said, I don't recommend ever using this stim in raid. One needs to be found in raid for the quest samples, so if you end up finding one, save it for that. It cannot be crafted and sells on the market for 40,000 rubles. Last, we have the SJ9 injector, the rarest and most expensive injector on this list. It's another with a single use case. For 5 minutes, it'll lower your body temperature by 7 degrees, enough that you'll no longer be visible on enemy thermal devices. Its debuffs are a decrease in the metabolism skill by 20 levels for 5 minutes. A tremor will occur and health points will decrease at a rate of 0.1 points per second for 420 seconds, and 5 minutes after injection, the pain effect will occur for 2 minutes. This won't be an injector you'll come by often, and the times where you may want to use one will be few and far between. It can be tough to tell when an enemy player is using a thermal device to spot you, as it all really comes down to assumption. If you do find one of these, I'd say a good time to use it is if you're getting shot at on woods in the middle of the night from a suppressed weapon, or you could just sell it. SJ9s cannot be crafted and are not needed for any quest, and their market price fluctuates all over in the hundreds of thousands. And that's all the injectors currently available in Tarkov. That was a ton of information, so I'll have each injector timestamped in the description below for reference. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments, and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again in the next one.